whose name seem to, seems to have got lost with Fernando Morelli has taken the majority of the, right. the kudos to make the film. Katia Lund has made some great documentaries about life in the favelas, much better than City of God. Mm -hmm. But I think these, these films, they do go on and they, they do get treated in an exploitative way and I do think that they give an unfair representation mm. of, of Brazil and life in Brazil. I don't know if that's an answer to, to mm. the question. And you know, you know, being a Brazilian, though, that there is a great divide and this huge social exclusion, which is just, just incredible. And why you have, like, Globo, which, I, I mean, if you go to Brazil and you stay in the North Zone and, and watch the television, you wouldn't think there's any black people in Brazil. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's, it's just it's just mind-boggling. Um, uh, it, so it's not socially representative the media at all, and so that needs to change. I think. So, so with films like City of God, when um, black people are represented in the media, I mean, when I was in Brazil, there was a lot of um, talk about City of God actually being quite a harmful film because when these people were represented in the media, it was reinforcing. Um, you know, the story, the traditional male story of violence and killing in the favela. And um, I was asking a question, <laughs> I just make a statement. No, that, 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 they seem uh, quite a good statement in the sense that, yeah, when you see in the media, in a film, uh, you see generally a black hand on a gun, but you need to look at, you need to look at the news in Brazil. For example, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, the news is just fantastic there, in the sense it just doesn't hide anything. It just, I mean, for example, I was there when the bombs went off in London, where, and uh, I heard the bombs went off uh, on the buses, and then I looked on the papers there, and there was just bodies, limbs. This was on the front pages. So the, the way that the, the, the violence there is very, very cute. Every day there's a lot of boys shown dead, sh blood, you know, they don't hold anything back. So to show a black man with a gun in his hand isn't necessarily, in, in a film, isn't necessarily something that doesn't happen every day and is something that's permeated right through the social consciousness of, 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 of white Brazil, for so sure. So even though you were saying you look at the telly, there's only white people, you wouldn't imagine that there were only black people in Brazil through other forms of media like news reporting. It's almost the opposite, really, showing life exactly as it is. Yes, that's true, but um, you don't see many positive stories in that sense. You just, you know, you, you, you just see guys with their hands behind their back. Um, it's, it's, it's not portrayed. For example, I mean, the, the only negative story I really saw that was of any importance about a black criminal was a politician got stopped at the airport in Sao Paulo with seven briefcases full of money and when they arrested him the federal police they asked him well, whose money is this? He said it's God's money it belongs to the church so there you have an example they're, 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 they're very clever and been able to diffuse what's going on and that, that, that story just got buried straight away you know but every day constantly they're reaffirming this uh, strong also um, I think it runs you know, it runs right through. It's, it's, I mean, I don't, I don't use the kind of the word, word racism, but there is a, there is, you're certainly uh, at a disadvantage if you have a darker cast in your skin in Brazil. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, and it, it actually, it's, it, uh, capoeira and samba are great examples of the white hand on the black banner because um, if you go, if you watch samba, for example, um, you'll just see beautiful white girls on the television dancing and you'll see maybe one girl push at the back black. And, but Samba is really, it, it, it is a black thing, it's a cultural thing, but it suits very well. Um, actually, that guy, the, the writer, said something very interesting to me. He said that Samba used to be different. The dancing was very, very good. And then what happened is the, these uh, girls from the Zona Sul, from the South Island, used to go to the very good Samba schools in the North Zone, watch these girls dance, go back because they, they had the parts on the shows and they would dance not as well as the black girls. The black girls would watch the television, see these girls dancing badly and think, well, that's the way we need to dance and adopt some of their moves. And this was actually diminishing the actual culture quite strongly. It actually, and, and, you know, so there you have an example of the, how media 
plays a very important part in how we structure in our minds what culture is and how, how it affects. And you show some of that in the film as well, don't you? Because you show the, the, the scenes where the capoeira is taken kind of up market and you see the kind of the white guys and, and their nice smart uniforms doing it and it's completely different to what you see when it's done yeah. by Husso and, and his, and his I mean it's very difficult to, to actually, I mean I might be completely way off base with a lot of what, what I'm saying but I'm just only, I only just observe some of the things, some of the things I observed they were quite interesting and I try to reiterate that some of that in the film but I mean the, 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 the problems there are quite deep and quite wide ranging um, someone actually said, listen, there's no problem in Brazil. It's set up to work exactly like that. It was set up during the, the uh, dictatorship to serve the elite. And the people you see skirting up and down the coastline in helicopters, they're the ones it's set up. It's a classic case of divide and conquer. You know, so you're saying that literally for 40 years it hasn't changed? Uh, absolutely in terms not. Of, in terms yeah. of lots of power? Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's just, uh, yeah, we don't have to look too far. It's like Brazil's very close to America. You know, in fact, in America, actually, Brazil's one of America's success stories. You know, in that sense, it's, it's the run just the way they like it to run, really. You know. I think we're going to have to wrap up, but one thing we do need to say is uh, that we, we've spoken about the film four years in the making, and like buses, there's another one ready to come along, isn't there? Yeah. Tell us just a bit about the new, the new project. Um, it's about the, the, uh, another family, but on the flip side, the Gracie family, which has uh, created a martial arts revolution around the world uh, and is responsible for a multi-billion dollar industry now. I don't know if anyone's seen the UFC, this, this mixed martial arts fight. And this is, comes from one family in Rio, based in Rio. And, uh, yeah, it's quite another interesting story. It's actually the flip side of, of Husu's. Actually, some of the people that used to train with this family were probably the very people that were persecuting Husu because the generals and the, the politicians and whatnot used to train with this. Uh, so it's another manifestation, a Brazilian manifestation, but actually Jiu-Jitsu was stolen off the Japanese uh, about 100 years ago by this family. Not stolen, but taken and, and, and revised and, and put into a much more practical context uh, and then re-exported around the world and it's just a phenomenal like economic story and a very interesting human story but actually I've taken this, the idea of telling the story from a fanatical female member of the family who doesn't fight yeah. it's so an interesting uh, well she's an actually yeah very interesting uh, character it's actually her son that I've started filming six years ago who is a who is a fat little chess, chess champion with spots and he was the least likely of anyone in the family to succeed and six years later he was the best fighter in the world he decided that he was going to be a doctor or a fighter and he just wanted to be the best at whatever mm. he did and he chose fighting and uh, I followed him around the world and yeah he's he right what's the, what's the film place. called? Um, Victory Victory and were you going to come back and show it to us? hopefully fantastic <laughs> but big thanks to Darren Bartlett and also to the <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on the Cine City podcast. Visit www.cine-city.co.uk to view or download this year's full programme, book tickets and receive up-to-the-minute festival news. You can also subscribe to the podcast while you're there to make sure you never miss an episode. The Cine City podcast is created in association with Director's Notes, the weekly film podcast dedicated to the what, how and why of independent filmmaking. Find it at directorsnotes.com.